Hello and a very good evening. You're watching the news tonight on Rajya Sabha Television with me, Frank Pereira. Here are the headlines. Union Cabinet approves setting up 15th Finance Commission, sanctions revise salaries for Supreme Court and uh, the High Court judges and clears ordinance to amend changes to the Insolvency and Bankruptcy Code. Finance Minister Arun Jaitley says government will ensure a normal winter session of parliament clarifies it didn't want the session to coincide with uh, elections in Himachal Pradesh and Gujarat. Brahmo's supersonic cruise missile successfully test fired from the Sukhoi 30 MKI combat jet milestone feat makes Indian armed forces capable of launching the world's fastest supersonic cruise missile. And ahead of uh, the Gujarat elections, Patidar Kota agitation leader Hardik Patel announces support to the Congress after it accepts his demand on providing reservations for the community. The Union Cabinet meeting chaired by Prime Minister Narendra Modi today approved the setting up of the 15th Finance Commission. It also approved uh, some other significant decisions. Here are the details. The Cabinet Committee on Economic Affairs on Wednesday cleared the setting up of the 15th Finance Commission. It will decide distribution of tax proceeds between the centre, states and local bodies. The Finance Commission is set up every five years. The government has allotted 10 crore rupees in the 2017-2018 budget for it. Recommendations of the previous 14th Finance Commission are valid from 2015 to 2020, while the 15th Finance Commission recommendations will be implemented from 1st April 2020. In other decisions, the Cabinet approved wage revision for central public centre enterprises. An enabling decision is that every CPSC has to employees with wage negotiations आरंभ कर सकती है कुछ सीपीएससीज में ये 5 वर्ष के लिए वेज नेगोशिएशन होता है कुछ में 10 वर्ष के लिए होता है हर सीपीएससी को फ्लेक्सिबिलिटी है द कैबिनेट आल्सो क्लियर्ड द ऑर्डिनेंस टू मेक चेंजेस टू द इनसॉल्वेंसी एंड बैंक्रप्सी कोड इट विल बी प्रेजेंटेड इन द विंटर सेशन ऑफ पार्लियामेंट सम चेंजेस आर प्रपोज्ड टू द इनसॉल्वेंसी एंड बैंक्रप्सी कोड Since this is being done uh, by an ordinance till it is approved, uh, as a matter of propriety, we don't give the details. The cabinet also approved the revision in the salaries, allowances, pension of judges of the Supreme Court and the High Courts in order to implement the recommendations of the Seventh Pay Commission. The increase in the salary and allowances will benefit 31 judges of the Supreme Court and 1,079 judges of High Courts. Around 2,500 retired judges will also benefit. The government has the Supreme Court Judges Condition of Service Act 1958 और हाई कोर्ट जजेस कंडीशन ऑफ सर्विस एक्ट 1954 में हम एमेंडमेंट करेंगे क्योंकि जजेस की सैलरी के बारे में कोई भी फैसला बाय ए प्रॉपर लेजिस्लेटिव इंस्ट्रूमेंट होता है तो उसको एमेंडमेंट करना पड़ता है अ न्यू स्कीम महिला शक्ति केंद्र थ्रू एम्पावर रूरल वुमेन विद एन आउटले ऑफ 3636.85 करोड़ रुपीस वाज आल्सो सैंक्शनड an agreement on cooperation between India and Russia to combat all forms of terrorism and organized crime was similarly approved. Also, India's membership for the European Bank for Reconstruction and Development got the nod. Kriti Mishra's report for Rajya Sabha TV. Well, joining me for a chat to talk about this is Shubhamoy Bhattacharji, Consulting Editor of the Business Standard. Shubhamoy, welcome to the program. And you know, as far as the 15th Finance uh, Commission is concerned, what's its role going to be? Well, you know, Frank, the Finance Commission, every Finance Commission is basically tasked with the role of deciding how the tax revenue of the, should be shared between the center and the states. That is the primary role. But from the 14th Finance Commission, an additional role has been given that also the amount of 
money which used to go as grant or as assistance which was a non-tax revenue from the center to the states which used to be decided by the erstwhile planning commission will also be decided by the finance commission so effectively the finance commission now decides on every rupee that has to be apportioned between the center and the states the way it will be apportioned the formula and everything related to that and how do things change now in a post gst uh, era That's the point because the GST era was also a creation of the Finance Commission. The 14th Finance Commission and the 13th Finance Commission had the 13th Finance Commission under Dr. Vijay Kelkar, the 14th Finance Commission under Dr. Y. V. Reddy have made extensive suggestions and for on the, on the basis of which the GST architecture finally came up. The 15th Finance Commission will have to see now how to take the GST uh, structure from here. For instance, many of the niggling problems, I would expect that they would be solved before 2020, when the Finance Commission comes into place. I mean, uh, by which time the Finance Commission starts uh, giving its decision. But most of what will be decided in the post-GST arena, as decision, for instance, uh, how whether the center and the states need to look at more tax revenue sources, how they should be looked at, and a substantial issue there is not just of GST but also of how money should be allocated to the third tier of government, which is the panchayats and the municipalities. That is also being decided by the Finance Commission. So, you know, it's a very extensive remit that Finance Commissions have. You know, and uh, going forward, what do you think is going to be one of the biggest challenges? What do you foresee to be one of the biggest challenges for the 15th Finance Commission? Well, uh, you know, the last Finance Commission, the 14th Finance Commission was given the task of also looking at how environmental issues, you know, would also cohere with the allocation of tax issues, you know, sort of normative issues that were asked to be dealt with by the Finance Commission. It did walk some part of the path, but I expect that the 15th Finance Commission will take on some of these new areas in a much more, uh, what I might call, wide-ranging way. To, handle, to be decided upon. So that way the 15 Finance Commission, now that the cooperative federalism is uh, already established, will have to actually decide between sort of equals that how and which way the money will be decided between the center and the states. And remember, with this, with this is, is, is dependent a lot of our money allocation as far as education, health, skills sector are concerned. These were not something which the earlier Finance Commission used to handle. But the 15th Finance Commission will be having to look very carefully at those things, how, whether there should be criteria for judging which states have done well, whether to reward them. So, you know, build in a system of incentives and uh, stick mm. for uh, allocation between states. Right. All right. Shubhamai Bhattacharji, we'll have to leave to that. Thank you so much for joining us there with all those details. Well, moving on. Now, Finance Minister Arun Jaitley clarified today that the government will ensure a normal winter session of Parliament. He also explained that the government didn't want the dates of the session to overlap with elections in Himachal Pradesh and Gujarat. Elections in Himachal Pradesh were held on November 9th, while Gujarat will go to polls on December 9th and December 14th. Results for both states will be declared on the 18th of December. In a democracy, when elections are on, political parties are then addressing the people directly. Elections and parliament sessions normally don't overlap. So even when general elections are held, you finish the budget session immediately in the first week of March. So that by the time the campaign begins and the elections are notified, the parliament session is not on. Well, the BrahMos supersonic cruise missile was successfully test-fired for the first time from the Sukhoi-30 MKI combat jet. The test significantly bolsters the country's aerial prowess. With this, the armed forces are now capable of launching the BrahMos from land, sea and air, completing the tactical cruise missile triad for the country. The land and warship versions of the missile have already been inducted into the armed forces. Defence Minister Nirmala Sita Raman congratulated Team BrahMos and the scientists at DRDO for the historic achievement. The BrahMos missile has a strike range of around 290 kilometers and is described as the world's fastest supersonic cruise missile.
Although you have it, of course, uh, the BrahMos missile there has been successfully test fired from the Sukhoi 30 MKI combat jet. It was previously test fired from land and uh, the sea as well, and now it has completed the triad with this uh, uh, test from the Sukhoi 30 MKI. मिसाइल अपने ट्रैजेक्टरी में जैसे प्लान था वैसे ही गया और जो टारगेट है उस पे डायरेक्ट हिट किया है इसके साथ जो भारतीय वायुसेना का जो क्षमता है जबकि स्टैंड ऑफ रेंज से मार करने का उसमें सिग्निफिकेंट यू नो कैपेबिलिटी आज आपने एस्टेब्लिश किया वेल लेट्स नाउ गेट यू सम अपडेट्स फ्रॉम द पोल बाउंड स्टेट ऑफ गुजरात इन आवर सेगमेंट वर्डिक 2017 Partidar Kota agitation leader Hardik Patel today announced his support to the Congress in the Gujarat Assembly election. He said this after the Congress assured him that they will give reservation to his community under a special category. Reacting to the development, senior BJP leader Arun Jaitley stated that the Congress was making promises that can't be kept. Partidar Kota stirred leader Hardik Patel has announced his support to the Congress for the Assembly elections in Gujarat. The support came after the Congress accepted his demand of providing reservation to the community. Gujarat ke bin araksit work ke liye specific survey hoga Congress ki government banti hai. So Assembly ke andar jal se jal Article 31C ke adar par Samvidhanik Article 46 ke pravajano ke adar par वो बिल विधानसभा में रजू करेगा पसारित पारित करेंगे कांग्रेस हैज प्रपोज्ड अ रिजर्वेशन फार्मूला फॉर पार्टीदार्स दैट विल बी ओवर एंड अबव द 50% कोटा फॉर एससी एसटी एंड ओबीसीज अंडर अ स्पेशल कैटेगरी हार्दिक पटेल आल्सो सेड द कांग्रेस विल टेक द कॉन्स्टिट्यूशनल पाथ ऑफ ब्रिंगिंग इन रिजर्वेशन पिछड़े हुए हैं आर्थिक रूप से भी समय आ गया है कि हम सब उनको आरक्षण की बात करेंगे और संभव है जैसे आज तमिलनाडु में हुआ है अगर दक्षिण के राज्यों में हुआ है तो कौन को तरीका निकाल करके बाकी देश के राज्यों में होना चाहिए समय आ गया है उसकी पैरवी हम लगातार करते आ रहे हैं However soon after the announcement finance minister Arun Jaitley took a swipe at the alliance and said that the Congress Hardik club is one of mutual deception as the law is clear that the 50% cap on reservation cannot be breached The law of the land is very clear and that's laid down by the Supreme Court. And only last week in the Rajasthan case, it has been reaffirmed that the 50% cap can't be breached. ये सौदा बाजी ना भाग रुपे यह ना जे स्क्रिप्ट पत्र कांग्रेस तरफ थी अप्पा मावियों चे ये पत्र आजे यह ने वाचियों चे आर्द्रिक जवा मुरखा में कोई न जो या अजू नानो छोकरों चे इतना हुए ना बहु कहतो न थी for the forthcoming elections, the Congress is hoping to dismount the long-ruling BJP by going for an alliance with the Partidars. Bureau Report, Rajya Sabha TV. Well, moving on now, voting for the first phase of Uttar Pradesh civic polls was held today in 24 districts. Polling was held for five municipal corporations, 71 Nagar Palika Parishads and 154 Nagar Panchayats. Chief Minister Yogi Adityanath expressed confidence that the BJP will emerge victorious in the elections. Polling for the second phase for 25 districts will be held on November 26th, while 26 districts will go to polls on November 29th in the third phase. Over 3.36 crore people are eligible to vote in the elections to 16 Nagar Nigams, 198 Nagar Palika Parishads and 438 Nagar Panchayats. Results will be declared on the 1st of December. Well, Vice President M. Venkaya Naidu has said every reform must have a human face and the fruits of the reforms must reach the poorest sections of the society. Addressing the gathering after inaugurating 160th year celebrations of Kochi Chamber of Commerce and Industry in Kochi, the Vice President said that the government's role is to provide an enabling role for businesses to grow. Advocating regulations without strangulations for trade, the Vice President said Chambers of Commerce play an important role in economic development of the country. The Vice President urged the corporate sector to take up initiatives in corporate social responsibility. He further said that the Cochin Chamber of Commerce and Industry must play a proactive role in this regard. He also said that demonetization and GST was in favour of the common man.
Vice President also spoke about the importance of playgrounds in the life of a child at an event in Kochi on Wednesday. He also expressed concern over contracting playgrounds for children to play in. The Vice President said this during an interaction with football players. There is still much more need to make sports as part of the life of the people. There is some craze on account of cricket internationally, but at the same time, there is so much liking for football and hockey also in the hinterland of the country, in the rural areas, people like these two games also, both football as well as hockey. They are very dearer to Indian people. The government is making efforts to have playgrounds also for the children because along with the studies, there is every need to have physical fitness programs. Well, here's a quick look at what else is making news across the country in our segment nationwide. The Delhi High Court today rejected a petition alleging that Congress Vice President Rahul Gandhi had skipped SPG security and put himself in danger. The court said that it was not the appropriate forum to decide on security aspects. Mumbai BJP spokesperson Tuhin A. Sinha had filed the petition. The Supreme Court today refused urgent hearing on a petition filed by the father of the Kerala-based woman, Hadia. The petition sought that the interaction with Hadia, who converted to Islam before marrying a Muslim, should be conducted in camera. A bench said it will uh, deal with the petition on November 27th itself when uh, she will appear before the court. The Supreme Court directed 13 directors, including five promoters of Jayaprakash Associate Limited, not to alienate their personal properties while accepting a demand draft of 275 crore rupees from the real estate firm today. It also restrained the directors from alienating the properties of their immediate family members. The Delhi High Court refrained from passing an interim order against the Election Commission order rejecting the claim of Sharad Yadav faction of Janata Dal United over the arrow symbol. It is uh, in its November 17th order, the Election Commission recognized Bihar Chief Minister Nitish Kumar led faction as the real JDU. An application filed by activist Aruna Rodriguez uh, seeking an urgent stay on the commercial release of uh, Genetically modified mustard came up for hearing at the Supreme Court today. Senior advocate Prashant Pushan argued that commercialization of mustard will not be a good move. The matter will be taken up at the next hearing after 12 weeks. Well, it's time for a short break now, but news and updates will continue on the other side. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. global leader. Image building is a very complex exercise. You can gain on some fronts, but you can lose on other fronts. India is changing and there will have to be give and take. The old days of colonialism are over. We have a strategic partnership agreement that includes areas of cooperation in all fields, including security and defense. India is taking confident strides on the global stage. Pakistan is now Terroristan. New friendships, stronger ties. Join me, Tracy Shilshi, every Monday at 10 p.m. as I speak to India's foreign policy elite. Catch all the action on India's world, only on Rajya Sabha TV. Welcome back. You're watching Rajya Sabha Television. Well, U.S. President Donald Trump's daughter Ivanka Trump today called the Global Entrepreneurship Summit 2017 a testament to the strong friendship between India and America. Hosted jointly by India and the U.S., the three-day summit will be held in Hyderabad from November 28th. Ivanka Trump uh, led a high, leads a high-powered uh, delegation of officials, women entrepreneurs, and businessmen. He is also expected to deliver the keynote address at the summit that will be inaugurated by Prime Minister Narendra Modi. Ahead of her India visit, Ivanka said that uh, for the first time in its eight editions, 
The summit has been themed women first and prosperity for all. According to her, this demonstrates commitment to the principle that communities thrive only when women are economically empowered. 1,500 entrepreneurs from 170 countries will take part in the summit. Women will represent 52.5% of the participants. All women delegations will represent more than 10 countries, including Afghanistan, Saudi Arabia and Israel. And news from Zimbabwe now, where former Vice President Emerson Manangwa, who was sacked by Robert Mugabe, is reported to be his likely successor. Reports said that the swearing-in ceremony will be held on Friday. There are joyous scenes across the country where citizens are looking forward to a new Zimbabwe without Mugabe. Thousands of Zimbabweans poured out onto the streets of capital Harare, celebrating the resignation of Robert Mugabe, who quit on Tuesday after days of political turmoil. The former president ruled the country for nearly 37 years, first as Prime Minister and later as President. People danced in jubilation, with some holding posters of Immersen Managua and Army Chief General Constantino Chiwenga. I was born in 1980. Mugabe was in power. Up to today, for three generations, Mugabe has been in power. Everyone has been suffering because of Mugabe and nothing was being done. And today marks the new independence. On behalf of Zimbabwe, I am so happy. We are liberated. We are I'm so happy for our children, for our generation. I believe this is the new generation. This is the new beginning. The joy that you are seeing is because the young are looking forward to getting jobs. The young are looking forward to a better future. The young are looking forward to a glorious Zimbabwe. Immersen Manangagwa, the former vice president of Zimbabwe, whose sacking led to the shock resignation of Robert Mugabe, is likely to be sworn in as the new president on Friday. Zimbabwe's neighbours and the international community welcome the change, hoping the transition will be smooth and peaceful. A moment of hope for Zimbabwe and for the people of Zimbabwe. Uh, for 37 years, they've been languishing under the rule of a despot who impoverished their country. And what we hope now is that the Political experts, however, say Manangagwa is not the obvious face of change. He was Robert Mugabe's right hand man for years and only fell out of favour when the former First Lady Grace Mugabe's political influence increased. Manangagwa himself faces many accusations of corruption and human rights abuses that tarnished Mugabe's own record. Bureau Report, Rajya Sabha TV. Well, the Yugoslav War Crimes Tribunal of the United Nations has convicted Bosnian Serb military chief Ratko Mladic of genocide and crimes against humanity. He has been sentenced to life in prison for the atrocities committed during Bosnia's 1992-1995 war. 75-year-old Mladic was found guilty of commanding officers responsible for crimes during the deadly three-year siege of the Bosnian capital, Sarajevo, and the 1995 massacre of some 8,000 Muslim men and boys in Srebrenica, which was uh, Europe's worst mass killing since the Second World War. A three-judge panel at the court convicted Mladic of 10 out of the 11 counts. As the judgment was read out, Mladic was ordered out of the courtroom for an angry outburst earlier. The judgment marks the end of the final trial at the tribunal, which was set up in 1993, while fierce fighting was still raging in Bosnia. Well, the U.S. imposed sanctions against 13 Chinese and North Korean organizations for helping evade nuclear restrictions and supporting North Korea through trade of commodities like coal. U.S. Treasury Secretary Stephen M. Munchin said that uh, his country will impose further sanctions and penalties on North Korea and related persons and will support maximum pressure to isolate the regime. The move comes a day after President Donald Trump put North Korea back on a list of state sponsors of terrorism. China has opposed the sanctions. Well, 
我们说过，如果说其他各方确实有这个意愿，在这类的问题上跟中方开展有效的合作，那么如果他们掌握确实掌握一些情况，完全可以通过同中方共享情报，开展合作的方式来妥善处理有关问题。And here are some updates from the world of sports and sports beat. India are assured of five medals at the AIBA Women's Youth World Championships. Five boxers booked their berths in the semi-finals of the ongoing tournament. Ankushita Boro in the 64 kilogram category, Jyoti Gulia in 51 kilograms, and Shashi Chopra in 57 kilogram weight category won their respective quarter-final bouts to join Neha Yadav and Anupama. Who already entered the last four stage. Ace Indian shuttler Sena Nehwal and PV Sindhu entered the second round of the Hong Kong Super Series. In the women's singles, Sena defeated Denmark's Mette Paulsen 21-19, 23-21, while Olympic silver medalist Sindhu beat Hong Kong's Leung Yue Ji 21-18, 21-10. In the men's singles, Parupali Kashyap lost his game against his Korean opponent Lee Dong-kyun, 21-15, 9-21, 20-22. Australia and England finalised their preparations for the Ashes series. Australia captain uh, Steve Smith confirmed that batsman David Warner, who sustained an injury during a practice session, will play against England. The Ashes series will start from Thursday with the opening match in Brisbane, Australia. Ange Postacoglu resigned as Australia's football coach a week after leading the Australian soccer team, the Socceroos, to qualification for next year's World Cup in Russia. Postacoglu came under the scanner after Australia failed to qualify for Russia, making them beat Syria and Honduras in the playoffs. Postacoglu said that he thought of quitting immediately after a 3-1 playoff victory over Honduras. Well, the motorcycle display team of the Army Service Corps set a new world record with 58 men riding on a single motorbike. The stunt was performed by tornadoes. Dressed in the colors of the Indian flag, the team flanked either sides of the moving bike and covered 1.2 kilometers at the Elahanka Air Force Station in Bengaluru. The act was performed for the Guinness Book of World Records, Limca Book of Records and Unique World Records. And we'll leave you with these visuals.